fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi yo, silver, the Lone Ranger. The masked rider of the plains fought crime and criminals throughout the western United States. And hi -Yo Silver became the battle cry of justice on the frontier. The honest settlers realized that without law and order, their new homes would never be safe. And they gave the Lone Ranger all the help they could. They were powerless to act, but they made sure that the news of any injustice reached the masked rider, and he never disappointed their confidence. Return with us now, those thrilling days when the West was young and adventure lay at the end of every trail. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, stay over. We're heading for Warshaw County. Someone's waiting on the trail ahead. Hi-yo, Silver. Away. <laughs> the Padre at the Spanish Mission was a great friend of the Lone Ranger's and at one time, he stopped every traveler who passed the little chapel and gave them a message. I would like to speak to the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger, Padre? Yes. If you should see him, ask him to come to me. I have heard of more injustice in the Gold Hills. The people there need the Lone Ranger again. I will let the word be spread. Padre wants the Lone Ranger. You see him, tell him. Get up. Get up there. By word of mouth, the message was spread among the pioneers, the ranchers, the half-breeds, and even the Indian tribes. Until finally, a great white horse raced from the north carrying the masked rider. Come. Where it reached me, Padre. I hear many stories of unfairness, amigo. It is a friend of yours who is in trouble. A friend? Who is it, Padre? A gold miner named Bixby. Caleb Bixby and Sarah? Yes. They may lose their mind. But, Padre, that claim jumper who tried to take it away from them is in prison. There is another. The man who runs the bank. Oh. He holds a mortgage, just as he does on many other claims. I understand. It has been a hard year for many people. They are unable to repay their loans, and they lose their land to this greedy man. But, Padre, that isn't the code of the West. This state can't be made great by such methods. The banks have got to help people over the lean years. It is true, amigo. That is why I sent for you. I do not know what you can do, but perhaps if you call on this banker, you can persuade him to be lenient. What's his name? His name is Taylor. Padre, I left signs along the trail for Tato. He'll see them and come here. Tell him when he comes that I'll be waiting for him. Thank you, amigo. Come on, Silver. We're heading for Warshaw County. I tell you, Sherry, they couldn't do nothing to me for that. Shucks, there ain't no law again killing a snake. And besides that, 
Self-preserving is the first law of human nature. Save your wind, Caleb, and chop that wood. <clears throat> it's self-preserving to keep your roof over your head, ain't it? I reckon so. All right, then. Taylor's a snake in the grass, ain't he? Chop that wood. <clears throat> Now, why can't I go and sort of shoot up Banker Taylor so he can't foreclose the mortgage on us? Because you can. Fine business for a fellow that owns a good mine like me, chopping wood. If things was only different so I could operate that m mine and give them help and one thing and another, we'd be rich. Well, it's been a hard year, Caleb, and you won't get no place complaining about it. Taylor's plumb in earnest about foreclosing and driving us out. I never see the man as ornery and disagreeable as he is. Caleb. Well? If you don't button your lip and stop your tongue from wagging and tend to chop in that wood, there ain't going to be enough fire to boil a pan of water for coffee. Well, I ain't lost a claim yet, and I don't aim to. But you figure on doing. I ain't licked yet. What you going to do, Caleb? I got an idea. You just wait. I tell you, Siri, the sight of that critter just makes my blood bile. Well, your blood's due for heating up then, because there he comes. Huh? Doggone. Just when I was working up an appetite. Oh, your appetite ain't never suffered none as I could see. Well, well, well. Don't drag back on them reins so hard. Can't you see you're hurting that horse? Well, it's none of your business, Sheriff. And look at the bit you're using. Dad, rat your tailor. You treat a good horse same as you do folks that owe you money. Well, what do you want here? I got a mortgage on this place, as I suppose you know. Ain't anyone in town that don't know it. Well, what about it? Five thousand dollars. That's the sum. Might as well be a million. Sum's due tomorrow, Caleb. Tomorrow at six o'clock in the evening. Gonna have the money? I don't know. You don't know? What do you mean you don't know? If you ain't got the cash now, you won't have it then, will you? You want to know mighty bad if I'll pay up or not, don't you? Don't matter to me if you do or not. You'll pay or I'll take over your gold mine. And I'd a whole lot sooner have the mine than the cash. I know that. I'm going to get that cash for you by the time that mortgage comes due. And you can count on that. You ain't getting it. You're just talking big, that's all. Uh, listen to me, you sawed-off, bald-headed, hop-nosed, stove-in coyote. I don't have to talk big. If Caleb says he'll have the cash for you tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock, he'll have it. Hey, don't believe it. I don't care if you believe it or not. Now get off my land. Just thought I'd remind you, that's all, Caleb. I says get. I'll get. But I'll be back tomorrow evening and I'll have the sheriff with me. And you'll get your cash. Get up there. Meanest man I ever heard of. He's an ornery pole cat. Lending cash, making us think he'd be fair about it. Same as other bankers out in this part of the country are. He's double crossed the whole of Washoe County, Sarah. I know, Caleb, but I don't think you can do much about it now. I get the cash, all right. Where are you going to get it? I'll tell you when we get inside the house. You go along in now, Sarah. I'll be right with you. Well, move fast, Caleb. We got company heading this way. Company? Leaping cactus, it's our mask friend. Oh, oh, that's over. Oh, boy. Land oh. sakes alive, stranger. You're as welcome as a man can be. Caleb, take care of his horse before you come in. I will. I sure will. It's an outright honor. Yeah. I've been hearing a lot of things about conditions here, Caleb. Well, there's plenty to hear. You come on inside now. Sakes alive. It's been a long time since we've had eyes on you. The Padre sent me here. He told me about a banker by the name of Taylor. I don't know what the Padre said, but he sure don't know the right words to tell you what sort of critter Taylor's turned out to be. Is it true that he's going to foreclose on your gold mine? I reckon so. Unless we get $5,000 before 6 o'clock tomorrow evening. He does hold a mortgage, then. He sure does. My ginger, it's good to see you. Be careful of that kindling wood. Hey, lady, uh, it slipped, Sarah, honest. But anyhow, mister, shake hands. How have you been, Caleb? Oh, just thinking about the way Taylor's been taking the gold claims away from folks does things to my innards. I declare I ain't had a good appetite since I first heard about him. Is the mortgage he holds legal? Gosh, I don't know. I expect it is. He made a lot of promises to me when he let me borrow the cash, but he didn't put them in writing, so I can't hold them to him. I'll have to pay him $5,000. Can you pay it? Nope, but I know where I can borrow it. I just had a letter through the mail last week from an old part of mine, a critter I grub staked once, and he struck it rich. He wants to let me borrow the cash to pay off Taylor. Caleb, you can't borrow from somebody else. Who says so? Well, you won't be no better off that way. No, we won't lose the claim, will we? No, but... He's got a heap of money, and he knows this claim. He's willing to let me borrow now and pay back when we get the ore out. I'm glad you won't lose your mind. But, Caleb, isn't there a chance that he did put some of the promises in writing? I don't think so. Haven't you a copy of that mortgage? No, we only signed one. He got the mortgage and me the cash. When I give the cash back, 
He gives the mortgage back, that's all. I see. Well, right glad you come here, mister. Maybe you can do something to show Taylor he ain't doing the right thing to folks around the Gold Hills. I'm going to look around, Sarah. He may have been so greedy that he stepped outside the lawn drawing up his mortgages. Well, anyhow, whatever you do, I got to get ready for a ride. A ride? A ride to where, Caleb? I got to see Jim Barton over to Red Pine. Red Pine? That's a powerful long way from here, Caleb. I know it is, but I got to see him. I got to start tonight so as I can get back here by tomorrow evening with the cash. Is he going to lend you the cash? Yeah, he written said for me to come and get it. I figured it'd be better for me to go myself and to try to send someone. There ain't no one you can trust. Except in maybe the masked man. Well, I'd better go myself and leave the Lone Ranger free to sort of look around town and see what he can find. I'll get ready now if you'll excuse me, mister. You go right ahead, Caleb. I'm going to look around town for Tonto. He's to meet me. In the cafe that evening, Taylor met Squint. A man who did a great number of odd jobs for him. Squin had a way of learning things and told the banker that... Caleb's getting the cash from Jim Barton at Red Pine. I know that because I seen a letter he got from Barton last week. Dang it. I figured on getting a claim. I hate to lose a chance to foreclose. Well, what are you going to lose it for? What do you mean, Squint? Shuck, you needn't let him get that cash. No. Caleb's riding for Red Pine tonight. Be coming back tomorrow afternoon, late. Mm-hmm. Hey. Go on, Squint. If he was held up and robbed on the way back, it'd be $5,000 that Jim Barton would lose, and Bixby would still lose a ranch. Meaning? Meaning that if you got the ranch, you'd be satisfied, and I'd be willing to run a risk for that much cash. Half the cash, you mean. Half. Otherwise, I'll manage without you. Mm, you hate to see a dollar get away from you, don't you, Taylor? Yeah. Could you waylay, Caleb? Yeah, I don't know why not. Then you'll wait till he's on the back trail and carrying the cash to get him. Yeah. Let him collect from Barton, then he can answer any questions Barton wants to ask. It's broken country between here and Red Pine. You won't need the dark to protect you. Shucks, no. There's plenty of hiding places. Mm, suppose you do it, then. Hey, Taylor. Yeah? That Redskin's been watching us close. You think he knows what we've been talking about? Of course not. How could he hear what we said? He's leaving anyhow. I sure didn't like the way he looked at us. Tonto, here plenty. Tell him, ask friend, when we meet him. Maybe meet him plenty soon now. Get him up, Scout. Tonto met the Lone Ranger as he came into town from Caleb Bixby's home. He quickly told the masked man of the conversation between Squint and Taylor. We could prevent that hold-up, Tonto, but it would be impossible to prove that Taylor had anything to do with it. That's right. I want to have a look at the mortgages Taylor holds. If he's done some crooked dealing there, we can see him jailed for that. If not, we'll have to find some way to link him with the robbery of Caleb Bixby. How you see paper? I'm going to Taylor's office. You get in office tonight? We can get in, all right. Come on, we'll go there right now while Taylor's still at the cafe. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. It took but a few moments for the masked man and Tonto to reach the bank and gain entrance through a window. They found the mortgages filed in the drawer of Taylor's desk. Here they are, Tonto. We'll have what I want in just a moment. Mm, that good. There's half a dozen of them here. I suppose every one of these people will lose their land when these fall due. Uh, Bixby, this is the one. You got them? Yes, we'll take it with us. Look it over where there's more light. Maybe it's no good. We'll soon find that out. Stand right where you are. What? It's the law speaking, mister. You stand still till I get a light going. <laughs> curtain falls on the first act of tonight's Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now on with our story. When the Lone Ranger and Tonto entered Taylor's bank to examine the mortgage he held on the Bixby claim, they were surprised by the sheriff. The lawman struck a match and lit the lamp on the banker's desk. You're staying where you are. You're covered. There. Now then, I aim to have a look at you fellas. We're not crooks, Sheriff. Not crooks, eh? Just broke in here for the fun of it, I suppose. That mask you're wearing, that's a part of the joke, eh? What have you got there in your hand? A mortgage. Put it on that table. Me, get him. No, Tonto, back. But him. This can be settled peaceably, Tonto. Make another sudden move, Redskin, and I'll drill you. One moment. Well? I said we weren't crooks. We've been here before. You may have heard of us. Likely I have. I know most of the crooks around these parts by name. What are you doing in here? Looking these mortgages over, especially the one Taylor holds against Caleb Bixby. Well, what for? You should know, Sheriff, if you have the interests of your county at heart. Taylor's been foreclosing the minute the mortgages he holds are due. Uh, he's a varmint, all right. When he granted these mortgages, he made promises he never intended to keep. In fact, those were verbal contracts that he's illegally broken. He was careful, however, never to make those promises in front of witnesses. Uh, I've heard talk. So he can't be held to them. But he may have overstepped himself. He may have drawn up these mortgages illegally. That's what I'm here to find out. Uh, I wish he had. I wish there was a way to jail that fellow. We'll see. Let's have a look at these. Yeah. This is the one for the Bixby mine. You should know something about legal forms. Fair enough, I reckon. And this mortgage made the 10th day of March, 1872. All by... that seems to be in order. It's been signed by two witnesses as well as Taylor, and acknowledged by Caleb. Oh, it's legal enough. Dad read it. These others appear to be the same. All in first rate order. All gone, why couldn't Taylor have slipped up somewhere? We can't use these against him, Sheriff. Blast it. There's only one way out. Yeah. And the less you know about it, the better. Tonto. Uh, hey, me got him. You grab me. Hold on. Take your gun. But I can't. I'll leave it just inside the window. You can get it when you leave. Hold on there. Keep warned to uphold the law. Your duty to jail is rendering the bank. We don't intend to be jailed, however. You're the first fellas I ever got the drop on that got away from me. Out the window, Tonto. Don't lose faith in this, Sheriff. Our methods are different, but our purposes are the same. Justice. You double crossers. You tricked me. I'll fix you. Come back here. Uh, Yeah, they're gone. <laughs> I'll bet a million the Indian thinks I didn't notice him all set to grab me. <laughs> yeah, doggone with them fellas here, things in Washoe County are going to hum. Yeah, my gun. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I reckon I'd better make out like I put up a fight. A couple of shots on him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, done my duty. Can't nobody say he didn't fire after them fellas. Now, I reckon I better just saunter slow-like over to the cafe and announce that I chased a couple of intruders out in the bank. <laughs> I wonder what the Lone Ranger's aiming to do. The sheriff returned to the cafe with the announcement that he had driven two outlaws from Taylor's bank. Taylor, relieved to think he had suffered no loss, praised the sheriff for his vigilance. Too bad them pole cats got away from you, sheriff. But being as it was two to one again, yeah, <clears throat> ain't to blame for it, I reckon. Leastways, I'm thanking you for running them off. <laughs> yeah, I done that all right. I'll walk over to the bank and see about the window you say they busted. Uh-huh. Uh, come along, Squint. Yeah. Wonder who them fellas was, Taylor. Yes, sneak thieves, most likely. But if they'd had blasting powder with them, they might have blown the safe and got clean away. That dirty crooks. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Squint? <laughs> yeah, nothing much. Just the idea of you calling them crooks. <laughs> What's funny about that? I reckon you wouldn't see the point. <laughs> <laughs> That's your bay. Uh-huh. No need to ride just to go to the bank, though, is there? You ain't going to the bank. That was just to get you away from the sheriff. Yeah? You're going to ride on that job we was talking about. Caleb Bixby? Uh, I guess so. Yeah, there ain't no big hurry, is Hurry there? enough. I don't want you waylaying him close to town. You can get out a ways. Catch him when he's coming through the hills. You have plenty of cover there, and there ain't much chance of things going wrong. I reckon. And before you get started, Squint, there's one thing I won't understood. Eh, what's that? You ain't touching that cash you take off of him. You're bringing it straight to me. Ain't half of it mine? And it is, and you'll get it. But you'll get it when I give it to you, and not before. Is that it? No, I don't see what's Squint, different. you're a good man for the things that I need you for. But the only time I'm a-trusting you is when I can see you. And even then, I got my suspicions. Shucks, I wouldn't do nothing, Taylor. Then see that you don't. Get that envelope that the cash will be in and bring it right straight back to me. Now you get it. Well, I got your word you're dividing. Yeah, you have. Then you can take my word I'm relieving Bixby of that cash. Get up. Get on there. He 
Sheila Bixby rode to Red Pine, received $5,000 in cash from Jim Barton, and set out on the return trail. He had been riding for less than an hour when he heard a distant shout. Whoa, whoa, there, whoa. Well, I'd have swore I heard somebody calling. <laughs> Must have been from around the bend. Caleb! Leap on cat, there's the mask man. And Tonto. And, and that's Jim Barton. Hi there! Hold on, Caleb. What's wrong? Oh, 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 well, what are you fellas doing here? We've been trying to catch up with you ever since you left Red Pine, Caleb. What for? Jim Barton here thought he might have made a mistake. Huh? You got that envelope with the cash in it? Sure, right here. Well, let me have it, will you, Caleb? Oh, now, Jim, you ain't going back on that loan, are you? Golly, you promised. Don't be alarmed. Well, nothing like that, Caleb. You see, I had two envelopes that were almost alike on hand when you called. After you left, I got to wondering if I'd given you the right one. Oh, is that all? Let Jim have the envelope, will you? Sure, sure. Here it is. <laughs> Golly, for a second, you had me scared. I was afraid maybe Jim might have changed his mind, found he couldn't spare the cash or something, and, and I sure wasn't looking forward to telling Sari about it. Well, I reckon we had our ride for nothing. Is that the right one? It is. Here. Hey, thank you. Well, Caleb, you'd better be getting on. You still got quite a ride ahead of you. Uh, Jiminy, it is getting late. Uh, I'd better hurry along. Goodbye, fellas. Get up. Get up. Uh, Come on. Get up. So but further on, Caleb was hollered a second time. A man with a drawn gun in his hand and his features concealed by a bandana spurred his mount from the cover of a rock and blocked Caleb's way. Reach! What? Right up there. Reach for the sky. This is a stick-up. Keep your hands away from the shooting iron, mister. Dan Reddick, you can't... Save your this. breath. I won't do you any good to talk. By God, you couldn't have picked the worst time to rob me. It all depends on how you look at it. Now, don't make a move if you want to get back to your claim alive. Caleb returned home and broke the news of his loss to Sarah. As evening approached, they sat on the porch of their little cottage, waiting with all hope gone. And on top of everything else, I owe Jim $5,000. Oh, Sally, I don't know why it is. When I get hard luck, it all comes at once. Nothing you can do about it, Caleb. You'll just have to get a job of some sort working for somebody. I'm so old, I don't know who'd hire me. You've got to pay Jim Barton back that money. Uh, look. Look yonder, Sherry. Yeah. This is the end. There they come. Banker, Taylor, and the sheriff with him. He ain't taking no chances on not getting us out. No, Banker, Taylor, don't take no chances. Losing the ranch is bad enough, but owing Jim Barton $5,000 is... is... Oh, drat it, Sherry. Nothing can do, Caleb. Oh, there, Caleb. Over there. Oh, there. Oh, oh. Oh. Ah, good evening, Sheriff. Reckon we know what you're here for. I'm sorry, Caleb. Don't go on sorry. Are you ready to pay up? Uh, I can't pay you, Taylor. Oh, can't pay, eh? <laughs> no, ain't that too bad. Well, reckon there's just one thing for you to do, then. You'll have to clear out. Well, we're, we're ready, Mr. Taylor. Sorry, I'd like to give you more time on your loan, but cash is scarce right now, and I can't take no chances. You ain't taking no chance. This claim is worth a heap of money. If it wasn't, I wouldn't have lent you the cash on it in the first place. Come on, Sheriff. Enforce the law. Get rid of these people. No one possession here. Take your time, Taylor. Oh, we'll clear out. Not so fast, Caleb. Why, Sebastian? Come on, Tonto. We've been around in back of the house waiting for you. Why, there's Jim Barton, too. Who are these men? <laughs> I reckon we'd best wait and see what'll happen now. What do you mean, see what happens? Suppose, Taylor, you produce the mortgage before you and the Sheriff turn Caleb out. Mortgage? Why, why sure, sure. If you have a mortgage... I got it. Right, right here. Yep, he bring it along all right. Uh, there. Sheriff, take that mortgage and examine it. Yeah. He can look at it all he wants to. It's legal. And there ain't nobody can say it ain't. Sheriff, is that mortgage initialed? Huh? Uh, let me see. Uh, Jim, what initials are on the mortgage? You'll find my initials there, Sheriff. J.B. Uh-huh. That's so. But what do you... Sheriff, I think you heard that Caleb was held up while returning from Red Pine. Yeah, I got the report. It was reported that cash was stolen from him. It wasn't, however. That mortgage was taken. Oh, the mortgage? Mistaken. It was the cash that was stolen. Why, don't you recollect? You was with Jim when he stopped me on the trail to make sure he'd give me the right envelope. When we stopped you, Caleb, we changed envelopes. You handed Jim the one with the cash. He put the mortgage in another envelope just like it. That was the envelope you got back. Well, don't pay no attention to that mash fellow, Sheriff. Wait just a it. second. There's something funny here. Stranger, you say the mortgage was stolen from Bixby? It was. Then how'd Taylor get it? That's just it. The fact that he's got it proves he hired Squint for the holdup. He thought Caleb would be carrying cash that would enable him to pay the mortgage. It's all a pack of lies. Well, you'll see if it is. 
Stranger, can you prove it was the mortgage that was stolen? If it's necessary, Jim will go to court and testify. He initialed that mortgage and gave it to Caleb. I think any jury would take his word for it. Then why didn't Taylor do something when he found out it wasn't the cash that Caleb had on him? What could he do? He had to show the mortgage in order to take over the ranch. Even if he did suspect it was a trap, he could do nothing. The mortgage hasn't been out of my bank since it was signed. Sheriff, if you remember what happened in the bank last night, I believe you'll know just when the mortgage was taken. Well, I'll be switched. <laughs> I said things was going to hum, and they did. Now, look here, Sheriff. Taylor, the Lone Ranger fixed up a trap, and you fell into it. You can argue all you want. But Jim Barton's word will go a long ways in any court in this part of the country. And I reckon when I get through working on Squint, we'll have confessions aplenty. Here, Silver. For heaven's sakes, I don't know what to think. I never figured on nothing like this. Now you don't have to pay back no money to Jim Barton. But the mortgage still isn't paid off. Yeah. If Taylor wants to force the terms of his mortgage, he can do so. But I think a lot of people in court would be glad of the chance to get even with him. He may need a few friends. Look, look, let me talk. You stay on here, Caleb. Stay on as long as you like. Pay back the cash when you're able. There's been a big mistake here. Give me a chance to sort of make a few friends. You better work fast, Taylor. Then we don't have to get out. No, no, no. Stay here. Friend, you saved our house and mine for us. You sure did. And turned up a couple of first-class crooks that's been in our midst for too blame a long a time. Ready, Taylor? Now, wait. I'm not ready. Wait a second. I want to tell Hello, you. Silver, away. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.